Hello, everybody. Here I am in my garden. The audio format of the recording from my home wasn't good, so I decided to replace that segment and read my poems in my guide garden recorded and added to the video, which is kind of cheating. On the other hand, it's better because the poems are written in and about this garden, so it's quite appropriate that the first presentation of these poems will happen right here. Here's my book, Bright Skies. The book is organized in sections, and the first section is Spring, Yosna. The first poem is The Day of a Plant Tree. Like a pink anemone at the bottom of a sea, stamen dance in slow motion. Plum flowers open and stretch towards the sun, the sun, the sun. They drink dew and juices of the earth, flowing up roots, trunk, branches. Their petals, like layers of crinoline skirt, fold and unfold, rearranging themselves around dark, plum-hued hearts of hearts. Dancing stamen wait for the bees to make honey and fruit out of the passing beauty. Soon, bees will rise among branches. Pink blizzard of swirling petals will waltz through the air, to the ground, to the roots, into oblivion. The flowering of the plum tree once again. Okay, there's poems coming through, and here we have the plums. They are not really plums, because this is a picture of an apple tree blossoming in Poland, actually. And here, at the end of this poem, is a picture of almond tree. So these flowers are not the same as in a book, however, they're as pretty. Let's move on, this is my mountains, and then move on to the next poem, which is rose with a, a gap behind it, and the poem is spring cleaning. It describes the actions I took and what I did, so let it speak for itself. Spring cleaning. This morning, I declawed the cactus, cut the spikes from the tips of agave leaves so they do not scratch children looking for Easter eggs. I cleaned out the pantry, sorted out one bookshelf and my past, carefully discarding useless fears and fading disappointments. I filled the crystal bird dish with water for finches, filled my heart with affection and delight. I arranged lilacs and daffodils into fragrant bouquets, green with camellia leaves and palm fronds left over from singing Hosanna in the church. I arranged my thoughts into a singular clarity of purpose, tranquil like the Pacific at sunset with tenderness of immense strength. Now, I only have to breathe in noon light to set old pain, anger, and resentment on fire, expel the ashes in a shower of sparks with diamond rays so brilliant they make me into a supernova, a revelation, cosmic, bright. Here's the second picture for the Cleaning. There's a lilacs from the Scanso Garden 
example here is a picture of artichoke leaves, the subject of the next poem called An Artichoke of a Poem. Writing poetry is like growing artichokes. From a seed of invention, the code for the unknown sprouts an immense plant with spreading silvery green fronds on tender beauty. Poem after poem, you spin out and admire, so proud of your way with words, constructing verbal edifices with arduous labor. The heart comes at the end, a flower but no larger than your palm that doesn't even open before you pick it to steam and taste bits of elegance and sophistication. High above your silver tower of gigantic soft and spiky leaves, a paradox of a plant, really, its purpose beyond comprehension, grows just one artichoke, a golden bud of a poem where each word is in its place, each insight so accurate and keen, it pierces the reader's mind with knowing. You discard abundant decorative leaves for compost to nourish next year's crop. Just one gourmet treat, an artichoke of a poem, blooming from so many ornamental words you string together day after day until the mystery reveals itself to surprise you with its inevitable, simple grace. Here we are. I like giving advice. Sometimes it's welcome, sometimes it's not. So here's a poem written with some water reflecting of the rocks in my stream. Practical advice for frazzled survive. When you reach the nadir of darkness, shine. When a stranger pushes you on the sidewalk, say, sunshine, smile, and shine again. Think of the head of a newborn resting in your palm. Five fingers smaller than the smallest of yours, a miracle coming into being. Glow with a tender infinity of diamond light flowing out of your heart, your best kept secret. You are the sun, the ascending spiral of timeless presence, embodied wisdom, infinite charm, the trinity of loving kindness, the living crystal constantly reborn, outflowing from the reservoir of divine grace you didn't know you were, are. Dazzling brightness, sparkling, twirling in an etheric world of nascent cosmos that comes into being in you, through you, with you. Say yes. So it comes, comes, comes again. All right, let's move on to the next page in the book. This one is dedicated to my children, whom I always give advice to never listen, just like I never listened to my mother when she gave me very useful advice. Let's move on. This one I want to read, it's too long. And then all these birds in the garden, another bird, a rose, another rose. Another garden poem. Let me see where are we? This is a beautiful garden. Spring. And then in the spring in California, we have oranges and grapefruit. The pictures of grapefruit because I like the sun in the picture. And the poem is about oranges in my garden. It is entitled From Minium Chronicles. I like the word Minium. I found it in a book of colors my daughter gave to me. So minium is the yellow color used 
in miniatures, hence the word miniaturist and miniature medieval manuscripts have these beautiful letters painted with minium. From Minium Chronicles for my children. A tall glass of water and three oranges, three blood oranges from a tree I planted 10 years ago in my Sunland garden. A tall glass of water. Hmm. A mum, a lump of clay that's returning to earth, ashes to ashes, the journey's done, nothing remains. Am I a star of unsung brilliance hidden in a fragile body, learning, collecting wisdom of limitation before my triumphant return to the glory of timeless now? Am I saved? redeemed? Do I need a savior? Am I my own savior, perhaps? What is true? What is real? Ashes to ashes, a light into light. A tall glass of water and three blood oranges for breakfast. I'm grateful for the knowledge they impart. What I am, what I'm made of, the abundance of rain and sweetness of sunlight fills the fruit with fragrant rosy juice under the soft, pliable rind, so lovely inside and outside. A fruit of the earth, air, water, fire nourishes me with elements. The fruit I made now fills me with morning happiness in the rain. Soothing patter of raindrops on the patio roof assures me that questions do not matter. Answers do not matter either. It is the now of breathing, of tasting, that slightly tart, refreshing orange I grew, a jewel I add to the beads of memories I keep. Let's move on. There's a sequence of poems here about water and the ocean. I love going to the beach in Oxnard. Mandalay Beach is my favorite. Also sometimes go to Topanga Canyon Beach or some other beaches and I take pictures of the waves because they're so beautiful. The Aquamarine was published already in two places and Red, so let's move on to the ocean of jade. The ocean of jade spoke to me yesterday. Waves came to the shore to caress the sand and paused in mid-air, waiting for me to notice their smooth jewel surface, their secret glow and the wisps of white sea foam twining through the air like lace on a collar or an intricate shawl worn by the ancient lady wisdom. The ocean of jade spoke to me, look and love, look and breathe, be in awe, admire the infinity of magic, jewels hidden and revealed in one sweeping motion the same wave that came to the shore to caress the sand and pause in mid-air just for me. The ocean is breathing and each wave is a breath from the ocean. And it's just so beautiful. Let's move on to the growth and garden in the midsummer beautiful time where we have lots and lots of greenery everywhere. So we're going to listen to a poem called Matka Boska Zielna, which means in Polish, Mother of God of the Herbs. The feast is on August 15th. Look 
at a greening of the slopes charred by last year's wildfire. It's magic. Look at the mountain sunflower that grew at the edge of the asphalt on Orovista Road. It already blooms out of nowhere. That's magic, too. The postcard-sized garden by the old wooden house, a shack, really, fills with flowers every spring. Fruit appears on orange trees after bees collect pollen. The scent of sweetness, the cheerful noise of bee wings. Is it not far more miraculous, a thousand, a million times more delightful than the 100 floors of steel, metal, glass of skyscrapers proudly pointing at the sky, incomparable with a patch of weeds, nature's miracle of renewal. How proud we are of our empty metallic constructions that will rust in the jungle, abandoned like stone pyramids of the Mayas, shrouded by vibrant green of leaves, and branches. Thousands of years of human fame obliterated by the steady, living, fertile abundance, the overflowing force of life, of matter, our mother. Roots, shoots, and tendrils spread out, germinate, flow through the soil in search of water, nutrients, life, more life, ever growing, ever richer, dancing, singing, the abundance of being, the song of creation. We are, we are, we are all. We are one, one, one. I pick a rose from my garden for the photograph here. Not shoots and roots and tendrils. I don't have a good picture of those. The pictures underground. Let's see. There's another water with rose with water on the petals. Isn't that pretty? Okay. Let's see. I think I'll end here with one more poem, which our founder of Village Poets in Sunland, who was the first reader of the whole book, Marlene Heat, liked the most in the whole book. It is a journey poem, a travelogue of sorts. So let's move on to find it. It's in a section dedicated to autumn. So that is coming up very clearly. After all these roses comes autumn, yeshin, fall. And the picture we're going to be looking at initially is this one. It's actually on my street in a stormy day, the liquid amber tree on the other side. It's changing colors. <laughs> on landscapes, a guidebook. First, you cross the salt plains of rejection into the desert of abandonment. Mount Disappointment lies just beyond the valley of regret. This is a huge country. You lived there for decades. You explored every nook and cranny, path, boulder, crevice. Ever since your mother disappeared for five months and a year, Ever since you learned to write at six, to send her your desperate pleas. Mommy, come back. Mommy, I love you. Mommy, why don't you love me anymore? You relieved this story time and time again in every marriage, romance. Now, you know too well how it feels. Now you can open the enchanted book and say the words of magic. Time to change the scenery. Let's see another picture from the poem. 
you pour out a river of molten light, dazzling, white hot, yet cool to touch, over the chaff of broken feelings, the dust of memories you wish were not yours to keep and gather for the ancient one. The chaff burns, the shadows flee, you find a grain of gold under your feet, smooth, shiny, polished, it is yours to keep. Is it a grain? Look closer. A golden acorn rests in the palm of your hand, planted in guilt valleys, planted in the desert of despair, plant on fear mountain slopes, plant on windswept plains of sorrow. It sprouts so fast. Soon, a magnificent oak tree spreads out its gold leaves and boughs. New life in your landscape of desolation. Look through its branches. Be mindful, attentive. What do you see? Here, the fertile fields of bonding. There, the rainbow meadows of connection. Look carefully now. See the pristine peaks of fulfillment, the sun garden of gratitude filled with every kind of fragrant blossoms, the heady perfume of rose and jasmine, the delicate scent of lavender and forget-me-nots, liquid melodies of birdsong in the air. This is not a mirage. This is your world to conjure up and delight in. Here, this gold grain is for you. Will it become an acorn or a pine cone in your hand? Come, let us plant it. Watch it grow. So there it is, the wisdom from my book. Life is just planting acorns and watching them grow into beautiful lovely trees it is making stacks of rocks like this one in a wash and leaving it for others to admire so i'm very grateful that you listen to my book thank you very much bright skies published by moonrise press available worldwide thank you bye bye